Good morning, friends. Welcome to another weekly reading vlog. I actually remembered to start the vlog this time. I'm so happy. I won't have to do it later on. Today has been like a crazy day. Paul's to work late tonight, so we kind of like stayed in bed for a really, really long time and got a really late start to the day. So it's 1.30. Today is day three of the juice cleanse. And when I tell you I wanna die, I wanna die. I wanna die. Like, cannot even explain to you. Last day, I have to drink my first juice because that's just how long it's been to get to this point. So, that kind of makes me actually feel a little bit better because a lot of the day has gone by already and tomorrow I'll be eating again. So anyways, let's look at the juices. Oh, I did want to update. I made it another hundred pages of the way through the final stripe since I updated you guys last. So I'm on chapter 30, which is page 343. And I like how this is developing. I think the main character has gotten way, way less annoying. And actually I only found her annoying or like infuriating in a couple of circumstances. I actually really like her and I, I like both of the main characters. I think that the conversation is really interesting about our main character, Nori, Nora, Nori, what is her name? Anora, Anor, that's it, Anor. And she is living like in blissful ignorance and obviously this is no excuse at all, but it's a good representation of how those with privilege who have never experienced other, anything other than privilege are living in this false world that they don't even know what's going on. And I am not saying that that's an excuse that you should not educate yourself to find out what's really happening. I just say that in a way that like that's very realistic in our world to be completely ignorant. I mean, obviously in a very bad way and, and it showed, like, I mean, I was extraordinarily ignorant and booktube has really opened my eyes to a lot of information that has just made me completely change like not that I was ever a bad person but I had a lot of blissful ignorance for a long time and so I think like I enjoy that representation of her and and then she's seen a lot of things now where she's like I had no idea that this is how it was um so hopefully like I'm hoping that direction the story is going to take I really don't know where this goes um I haven't really heard anything about it and I have less than 300 pages left so I definitely have some hopes for what's going to happen but I mean I just really I think this is really strong I think this is a really really great like it it's like if you miss reading young adult but you want a fully fleshed out adult story as far as words of radiance I made it to book five this morning because when I said last week that I made it to book four I really meant book five I didn't read like a whole book in a day um but I'm on book five I made it through the interludes and I just can't, I, for, I literally forget how book two ends. Like I completely forget how book two ends. So I'm like on the edge of my seat being like, okay, where are we going? Like what, like what is going on? Because I read them a while ago. So I, yeah, I don't know. The first time I read it was years and years ago. The second time I read it, I rushed through it. So this has been such a great experience. I'm loving my time with it. I love Adolin and Shalon and Kaladin and Dallin. Like, I, I love them all. The only person that's horrible is Elokar. I mean, like, I mean, obviously there's the villains of the story, but then there's the king who you're just like, he's like the king on um, a Game of Thrones series. And why can't I think of his name right now? Just so spoiled and privileged and, and horrible. So I'm going to go do some things now that I've started this. All right, you guys, let's get what is up first. Hot shot, and I need a green zero. That's up next. And by up next, I mean up first. Okay, you guys know that I'm miserable here um, on my last day of the juice cleanse. So I put on a really silly show I don't care for, but like somehow still want it on in the background, or My Life with the Walter Boys. And I went through and I found all these books to read for the R slash fantasy bingo board situation thing. And it was actually fun. It took up quite a lot of my time and it took up some like brain space distraction. So it was good. So I just filmed that for you guys. I don't know what the other video I'm going to film this week is. I was thinking like maybe I'll overhaul this library and like unhaul some books and clean some things up. But also that seems impossible right now. So Maybe I'll ask Instagram really quick what they want, what video they request this week. That'd be cool. Imagine being this cute, like it's your job. Like it's just your job to be this cute every day. Let me put this back, baby girl. I finally get to wear my new tennis skirt because we're going to try to go play tennis. Unless there's kids that are training who actually play tennis. Thank you. 
It's eight o'clock. I've taken my melatonin. I am in bed. I have a book. We're gonna watch TV or a movie, Outer Banks, Mother of the Bride something, and I've made it. I've made it. I've made it three days without eating. So I'm um, so excited to eat food tomorrow, and I just hope I don't get sick from that as well. But we made it through the three-day juice cleanse. Um, probably never again. I don't know. It'd be phenomenal if you have an event. I'm telling you that. Just a typical Saturday. Kitties, basement yard. Squirrel slash bird watching. We almost left without our outfits of the day. I got dressed first. Not sure. I did, and you said no, that's what I was gonna wear, so we're matching, but it's cute. It's a vibe, we're gonna go with it. We're gonna go to an art show, and maybe drinks and sushi. Something like this. <laughs> Stick around the bottom of my shoe. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind how I look, I just woke up, but I went to get the Whole Foods order. No, I went to go start vlogging and then the guy was bringing my Whole Foods order and then that was embarrassing. So uh, my, one of my favorite feelings ever, I just finished a book, loved it by the way, I will update you guys later. Uh, just as a preview, I gave it a 4.5 out of five stars. So I thought this was really, really good. Um, but I have finished this, which means I get to pick a new book from the TBR shelf. So let's take, well, Let's leave this out, so we're going to vlog about it, but let's take a look at what's on the shelf. To read, right now my options are, ooh, maybe I'll go with that. Empire of Exiles, Assassin's Apprentice, Shadow and Summer, Shadow and Claw, The Dispossessed, The Howling Dark, and Once Upon a Broken Th Throne. Nope, Once Upon a Broken Heart. For some reason, I'm kind of leaning towards that, or that, but, hmm... So I'm going to bring two books downstairs with me to work out. I'm going to bring A Shadow in Summer by Daniel Abraham. And then I'm also going to bring Empire of Exiles by Aaron N. M. Evans. Just because if I'm not vibing one at the moment, I don't want to come back upstairs. So let's go do that. Actually, first, let's go get the Whole Foods order. And look at an owl. Where's a Ronnie? Is there a Rana bear anywhere around here? Where's your sister, Owie? So lovely. Because I'm doing those meals, I got a super small haul this time. So I think I'm going to still make uh, breakfast smoothies at home. So I got passion fruit. This is dragon, passion fruit, and mango. And then these are just the dragon fruit. So those are my favorite for smoothies. Bananas for smoothies. And then I got some fruit to snack on at work. So I got pineapple, strawberry, and papaya. I always need avocados. I decided to get these instead of the big one this time. Some cucumbers to snack on. Are those not the cutest things ever? Uh, grapefruit juice to mix with my Pellegrino. Of course, my almond milk for smoothies and matcha lattes. I'm trying this um, as a probiotic. It's really, really good ingredients. Should be good for you. And then coconut cream for lattes. And then my favorite, favorite, favorite ever Lara bar as of late is the pecan pie. I swear to you guys, it's the best one. I wanted to quickly update you guys about my final thoughts for the final strife. This just really surprised me. I think I went into it kind of having low expectations. Like I picked it up with high hopes, being like, you know, a little doubtful, thinking it might not work for me, but fingers crossed that it would. And it so surpassed my expectations. It was so well-crafted, well-developed. I really loved the characters. I loved the very small relationship rom romance elements of it. I think that those were like so much in the background that it didn't take up a lot of the stories. Usually I'm not one that really loves trials in books. And so I thought that that was done fantastically because it was never too much. Like 
the trials were a huge part of the story. The actual trial itself went by very quickly, which I just, I don't like reading about combat or the trials in and of themselves. There was a point that like during one of the trials of the mind and whatever happened at one point, like I almost cried because I was like so proud of this one character. And I don't know, I just felt very emotionally attached to the characters in this book. I think the writing was really strong. I'm, I mean, it's horribly sad. This world is a very, very sad, hard to read world. Um, it's very dark, but I think that the like ending where we're slowly finding out bits and pieces of the history of this world as we get to the end of the book just has me dying for book two because I feel like we will get more explanation and world building in that book and just get more secrets uh, uncovered and questions answered and things like that. So I'm nervous about where we're going in book two, but also hopeful that it will have a good ending. Actually, it's not an ending because it's a trilogy. I just found out this morning it was a trilogy. So I don't know. I, I think I gave it 4.5 instead of five because I never felt like wowed necessarily. And it wasn't like, oh my God, this is a new favorite of all time or anything like that. It was just a solid book all around. So with that 4.5 rating, I don't really have any specific complaints or critiques it just takes something really special to be a five-star book in my mind so that's why it didn't quite give five stars but also I can't really say any critique of value or give you any explanation of things I didn't like about it so this was such a pleasant surprise I'm so happy to have read it this month I left my copy out there but I started um I think it's a shadow in summer by Daniel Abraham this morning I'll try to put a picture in and I'm not going to lie, I'm like 67 pages in, something like that. And I hate it. So far, I really hate it. Um, it's a lot about what seemingly is forcing a woman to terminate her pregnancy, perhaps, or using another woman's pregnancy for something. And so, like, I do not like, it seems to be a sexist world so far. Um, so I don't like what the plot is about. So I just, if I could read about anything, like, I don't care to be reading about that so like I really really dislike it at this point in time however in saying that I have a couple friends who read it and one specifically who thinks that um I will enjoy it and told me that you get explanations for things later on so I'm going to keep pushing through because it's definitely an Asian inspired world and the schools they have and this um forget the name for it it starts with an a but it's like this type of poet they say that uses words to like control things and that part of the world is very interesting to me like they're using it for producing cotton and trading and basically like wealth and power to keep this economy going so the hierarchy of like the training systems with the schools and these poets that's all very fascinating in this world it starts out very very confusing um so you definitely have to stick with it like 70 pages in i still barely have a grasp on this world at all but i think i'm going to give it like let's say at least 150 pages um, to see if the plot gets any more interesting to me because it's really like if the prologue was so interesting, the prologue was like 10 out of 10. I was like, I am so down to follow this character and see where this goes. And then I realized it was the prologue and we're not going to keep following that character. Sometimes I hate when that happens. So we will see where it goes from here. We're going to go to the range. I'm going to watch Paul hit some golf balls because I am absolute garbage at golf and I have no desire to improve at all. He might golf, we'll see. Good morning, Eddie. Just hanging out here. We need to refill that. There's like nothing out there, poor dude. Before I leave for work, I wanted to update really quickly that I did make it a little farther in this. So this morning I got to page 129, which is chapter seven. One of the chapters just kept referring to this one woman as the fat woman. And I just was like, I'm so over this written by a man. Like I just, I literally, I don't have time for like, I don't know. There's just, I don't even care when this was written. I never would have referred to someone as the fat girl at any point in my life. And that's just like common sense. So um, that really rubbed me the wrong way. Like I said, we're already trying to terminate this girl's pregnancy against her wishes. And then it's just like not a good plot as of right now. Um, but then I got to a part where 
I don't want to say what to spoil it, but there's a connection to the prologue and I really like the prologue more than the book so far. And so that is what I'm going to grasp onto and keep going with. And then we'll just kind of like write it out and see what happens. It's not a super long book, but like I'm not having a fun time reading it. So we'll see how it goes. I'm still very much on the edge right now of what I'm going to do. But yeah, just not a fan of like the women representation in this. For a little update, you guys, these are, I don't know why it looks so blurry. What is wrong with my phone? Maybe it's a steam, um, but these meals have been amazing so far. So I really do recommend them. I think it's yummy. You guys, I did read just a tiny bit more of A Shadow in Summer today. I made it to page 150. Like I said, I would give it a try and I still hate it. Like. I hate it. I'm not having any enjoyment, so I'm DNFing it. I already listed it on my Pango books, which is in the description box. Um, so yeah, I'm done. Giving up. Gotta go back to the TBR shelf. Not for me. I've got the babies. They've been running around this more. I don't know where they all are though. Oh. The bunnies are out there too. So it's Monday night. I'm nearly finished with Words of Radiance right now. I just want to say before I forgot that I think that the end of this book really suffers from some pacing issues. Like I just sort of found when I'm listening to the last, like I would say 10 hours, maybe, maybe not quite that many, like eight to six hours that I kind of get lost. And I think the pacing, we have so much build up, build up, build up, build up. And you're like, oh my God, what's going to happen? And then it falls off really hard. And like, that's not a good time to fall off. And you know that more is coming, but I really don't like the pacing at the tail end of this book. So once I finish the last couple of hours, I'll obviously update. I mean, I've read it before, but like as my reread and re-experience of it, I will update you because I just don't think that's done as well as it should be. Okay, it is Tuesday. A couple of updates here. One, I finished Words of Radiance this morning. Gave it like 4.5 out of 5 stars. Gonna sit with it for a little bit. Um, I really thought it was gonna be a 5 star until we got to the end. So I just think like the end was sort of anticlimactic. I don't know. I want to know if people feel similarly to me about that situation. This morning, I decided to pick up Empire of Exiles. I read a little bit last night and a little bit this morning. I didn't even make it 30 pages into this book and I was like, no. That's a no for me. Absolutely not a hard no. Um, I DNF this. I'm listing it on Pango. It was just not bad at all, but I don't care at all. Look, it's the most, this is not a Britney book that I could ever pick up immediately. There's going to be a mystery. I don't like the tone. I don't like the setting. I don't like the vibe. I don't like the characters. I don't like the writing. <laughs> I don't like a single thing about it. It's very not Britney. Um, and then I just have the dust jacket here because the book's over there. I decided to pick up Once Upon a Broken Heart instead by Stephanie Garber, and I'm obsessed already. I'm nearly 50 pages in, and I think it's wonderful, delightful. So I'll update more about like what this is about later, and then, because I got to get going to work, the audiobook that I decided to pick up after finishing Words of Radiance is Womb City. So gonna give that a little bit more of a go and then I'll update you guys more later about that as well. Okay, so before I get too far into this, I wanted to update you guys and tell you how I'm liking, oh, what is it called? Once Upon a Broken Heart because I have made it to page 198, which is farther than I initially anticipated that I would get. At this point, it reads so fast, so like so freaking fast. So the very beginning, initial impressions, I was like, yes, hard yes, absolutely love this. And I'm not disliking it at this point, don't get me wrong. I just think some of the initial like charm has worn off maybe, I don't know how to describe it exactly. So you're following this girl, she's in love with this boy and she's like 17 I think. Her stepsister all of a sudden gets engaged to the guy she loves and like he goes along with it so she thinks he's under a spell. So she finds this way into the church to find this, I forget what they call them, one of the fates to like make it to where he doesn't get married so that she can be with him. Of course things go awry. And I think one of the things I love the most about this is the writing and the descriptions. I love the gorgeous descriptions, the pretty balls, everything the way that it's described, whether it's the dresses or the world that they're in, people have colorful hair. It's just like a lot of great imagery that I love for a young adult setting. And then I'm quite intrigued because I will still say at 198 pages in, I don't know where we're going. I don't know what Jack's this um, fate. I don't know what his goal is. I just kind of found out a little bit 
that I think I kind of know where he's going. Um, but beyond that, I don't know. And then I don't know what's going on with her stepsister because she's an orphan and her stepmom is really mean. And so, yeah, I don't know. I like it so far. So funny to me because I, I will have, like people are so opinionated and so confident in their opinions. And like when I talked about this book on my channel, I'll get people saying like, oh, I hope you love it. I think you're going to love it. Then I get people being like, you will not like this. If you did not like Caravelle, you will not like this. And I'm like, everything is is up for grabs at this point like I couldn't even tell myself that I would not like a book based on something else so like no one can tell me I will or won't like something it's just it's so funny when people are so like adamant about what I am and I'm not gonna like um so I'm having a fine time I'm having a good time I'm glad I'm reading it and I will definitely finish this within the next couple of days I've gone back and forth a couple times actually I should bring you with me I have well, I started Womb City for my next audiobook, and I don't have anything bad to say about the book at all. It's very relevant in the socio political um, value and explanation and things like that. But what I will say is it felt like preachy, as in, you know, that's the author's goal, which is great and has its time and place, but that's just not what I want to read right now. I want to read something that's entertaining, not like, hey, I'm going to keep talking, like not at you, but like screaming to the void kind of is how it feels. And I'm just not in the mood for that. So I DNF that for now. I don't know if I'll ever go back to it or not. Um, once again, I don't want to discourage anyone from picking that up because that's not the point. It just is like I wanted to be entertained. And I started instead the audiobook for The Dispossessed by Ursula K. Le Guin. And so Ursula K. Le Guin is very interesting writing. Like her books are not straight entertainment value either, but they are so thinky and make you like really contemplate a lot that it's entertaining because of the work you have to do. And so I'm enjoying this. I'm like nearly 20% of the way through it, but I think I'm going to go back and restart chapter two. Um, and kind of go from there just because I feel like this morning when I was getting ready, I wasn't paying as close of attention to part of it as I would have liked to. So I want to go back. Um, but yeah, that's my current audiobook and my current physical read. Now I'm going to eat some lunch and yeah, watch some YouTube, probably some Olivia Reads Latte per usual and some witty novels. I don't think I showed you guys that I got my new Beast Blender and I love it. It's gorgeous. It looks so much better on my counter. Can't wait to get rid of that one. So everything will be like white and matching and it blends so much better. So I am super happy with it. I haven't shown you my matcha in a long time. So here's me and my morning matcha that I'm still drinking. I actually probably am going to transition to having an afternoon matcha as well because I just can't make it through life lately. I'm just too tired all the time. But yeah, so love my new blender. I did end up going back and starting the dispossessed um, back over from chapter two. There was a tiny bit of chapter two that I like really remembered directly, but it was more so like the second half of it that I wanted to remember. And then there was this passage I love that I have to go back and take pictures of in my physical copy and read to you guys because it was so good about like pain and life and the point of life. And then I'm on chapter three now because chapter two was more like flashback and chapter three is more like now. And this book is really hard to listen to if you're like me. Like I need to go back and re-listen to part of chapter three because I'm just, that's how my brain is as of late. But I do need to drink this matcha. Go to work. Today is my nephew's preschool graduation. So I get to leave work for a little bit and go see him there. I'm so excited. It's like bittersweet. It's like super, super sad, but super happy as well. And then um, what else? Last last day of the vlog, I suppose. I don't think I'll finish my physical book today either. So yeah, we're just in a, a rut of not finishing books during a vlog, but that's fine. I don't really mind that too much. Bye-bye, Angel. Did you guys see? She immediately, when she knows I'm recording, looks away. Honey girl. Bye-bye, this angel. Oops. Big yawn. You sleepy? I'm sleepy too. It's only six something. Time to go to work. Bye, angels. Bye bye. We just got back from the playground playing with my nephews, and I did a lot of spinning today, which was really fun. I really love that. Um, and I got to spend a lot of time with Lincoln, um, which was great. So, anyways, the plants are dying. You always know, like, it's a time in Brittany's household. When the plants are dying because brain who has one mental health she's not here 
Um, but what we came for is story time, children. Gather round. Uh, not children, in fact, but just however you like to think of yourself. The dispossessed. Let's go. Uh, this is the passage I was referring to in the earlier vlog clip, if you were here for that. So, I love this. Uh, we're cooking sweet potatoes in the background, sweet potato fries in the air fryer specifically. Don't eat a baked sweet potato. Ugh. Anyways, so suffering, well, let me just, the prelude, okay? They talked about the best stroke for long distance swimming. They talked about whether their childhoods had been happy. They talked about what happiness was, on and on. Suffering is a misunderstanding, Shabak said, leaning forward, his eyes wide and light. Then we're skipping way ahead over this very descriptive paragraph. I mean, it's nice, but not necessary. It exists, Shabak said, spreading out his hands. It's real. I can call it a misunderstanding, but I can't pretend it doesn't exist or will ever cease to exist. Suffering is the condition on which we live. And when it comes, you know it. You know it as the truth. Of course, it's right to cure diseases, to prevent hunger and injustice, as the social organism does. But no society can change the nature of existence. We can't prevent suffering. This pain and that pain, yes, but not pain, capital P. A society can only relieve social suffering, unnecessary suffering. The rest remains, the root, the reality. All of us here are going to know grief. If we live 50 years, we'll have known pain for 50 years and in the end we'll die. That's the condition we're born on. I'm afraid of life. There are times I am very frightened. Any happiness seems trivial, and yet I wonder if it isn't all a misunderstanding. This grasping after happiness, this fear of pain, if instead of fearing it and running from it, one could get through it, go beyond it, there is something beyond it. It's the self that suffers, and there's a place where the self ceases. I don't know how to say it, but I believe that the reality, the truth that I recognize in suffering, as I don't in comfort and happiness, the reality of pain is not pain. If you can get through it, if you can endure it all the way. The reality of our life is in love, in solidarity, said a tall, soft-eyed girl. Love is the true condition of human life. So-and-so shook their head. No, Chev's right, he said. Love's just one of the ways through, and it can go wrong and miss. Pain never misses. But therefore, we don't have much choice about enduring it. We will whether we want to or not. But we won't. One in a hundred, one in a thousand goes all the way, all the way through. The rest of us keep pretending we're happy or else just go numb. We suffer, but not enough. And so we suffer for nothing. What are we supposed to do? Go hit our heads with hammers for an hour every day to make sure we suffer enough? You're making a cult of pain, another said. Suffering is dysfunctional, except as a bodily warning against danger. Psychologically and socially, it's merely destructive. But the whole principle of mutual aid is designed to prevent suffering. And then there's this whole passage. I'm going to hate myself editing this. There's this whole other passage that I literally love the very end of chapter two, in case you want to check it out for yourself. And it ends with, I saw that you can't do anything for anybody. We can't save each other or ourselves. What have you left then? Isolation and despair? You're denying brotherhood, Shebek, the tall girl cried. No, no, I'm not. I'm trying to say what I think brotherhood really is. It begins, it begins in shared pain. Then where does it end? I don't know. I don't know yet. Like, stop, please. Cause that speaks to my entire being and soul. Like, what was the, the first quote? Our existence is suffering. Thank you. I've never felt more validated. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not like somebody out here hating life. I'm trying every day to survive. But like, most days are that. You know, most days are like, why am I here? What am I doing? Just trying to like make it through the day, make it through life kind of. So, um, reading words like that is like, that's why I love Ursula K. Le Guin. Cause she can have just something that's so like, that's not what this book is about, but she uses those book. She uses her books to say things like that. And like, I love that. I'll reread that 10 more times today, probably. So I want to share that with you guys. I've I haven't listened to any more of it today. I have made it farther through um, Once Upon a Broken Heart. And I love it so much, but I do have something to say. This is not spoilery. It involves a type of being that is in this book. So if you don't want to hear that, I don't know, skip ahead 20 seconds. There's a vampire in this book. And I'm just like, I'd rather not read about a vampire ever again in my whole life. So that's all. That was kind of disappointing. But I don't think, I don't know if it's going to play a big role in it or not. Fingers crossed it won't. 
Um, also, I'm just destined to be in long sleeves and sweat all summer because I can't get my tattoos any sun exposure, so that's fun. Fun times. I have an appointment tomorrow for removal. And uh, yay, treatment three for the this one area. So yeah, it's all for now. Sometimes I have insomnia and I wake up and finish books in the middle of the night and then I finish them in like a fever dream and then later on I'm like wait what happened so let me look okay now I'm remembering I wanted to tell you guys before I ended this vlog that I finished Once Upon a Broken Heart I gave it four stars I thought it was really really great I thought it was super fun it was like enchanting and whimsical and everything I love about young adult fantasy so I'm definitely going to continue on with it especially the way that it ends because it's quite a cliffhanger. You are like just getting into the meat of the story when you end this book. So very excited to see where it goes. I love our main character. I like the potential love interests because there's like several at this point. I have so many questions about this world and about her stepsister and everything going on. So this um, has just been so much fun. So glad I read it. Give me any of your favorite heart emojis if you've made it to this part of the vlog because there are a lot of heart emojis to choose from. And I personally love the heart emojis. So tell me if you've made it this far with a heart emoji. Hope you guys are having a wonderful Monday. It's gonna be a holiday weekend when you guys are seeing this. So you might be doing something fun. Tell me what you got up to over the weekend. I feel like Memorial Day is kickoff to start of summer and I love that. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time. I've been